In this video, you'll learn how to show that points are collinear using vectors. So collinear, remember, is just a term that means lined up. So we're trying to prove here that three points are lined up. So the points can be in either two-dimensional, three-dimensional space. Most of the examples in this topic are in 3D space. Our two examples here will be in 3D space. But you can apply this technique to points that lie in 2D space just in the same way. So before we tackle these problems, let's have a quick think about the theory. So let's say that we've got three points and we suspect that they might be lined up, so they might be collinear, and we want to prove that they're collinear. So we're going to tackle this problem using vectors. You can also do the same thing using gradients, and, and both methods are fairly similar in, in complexity. So let's just say that we've got labels on our points here, so we'll just go for the traditional A, B, and C. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this line uh, into two vectors. So we're going to make the vector A, B, so the vector from one of the endpoints to the midpoint, and then the vector B, C. So just basically going along your line, splitting it into two vectors. So we've got vectors A, B, and B, C. So we're going to have to construct these vectors into component vectors, and we'll do that once we get to the actual problems. But how does this help us? Why is it that having two vectors is going to make this problem um, achievable? Or solvable, it's because if you take, if you imagine you've got points that are lined up, so if this is A and B and this is B and C, so lines something like this, if those points are collinear, then it means that basically these vector lines are going at the same angle, right? Because if your points are not collinear, then the angles would be off. So one might go in this direction, the other one might be slightly off, or it might be way off, but it's not going in the same direction. If they are collinear, then they are going in the same direction, so they're like this. But if you think about it, this here is another version of parallel. So if you take those two vectors and move them, which you can do with vectors, vectors don't care if they're here or here, it's still the same vector. If you move these vectors and end up in this scenario, if they're going in the same direction, we would say that they're parallel. Now we tend to think of this as parallel, but this can also be parallel and this can be parallel as well. So if we can show that our vectors are parallel, but it's not this version of parallel because this point is point B and this point is also point B. So we've got what's called a common point. So parallel plus the common point must mean that the points A, B and C are lined up, so they are collinear. So we've broken this problem down into really constructing our vectors, showing that these two vectors are parallel, and then just stating that B or whatever the letter is is a common point. Parallel alone is not good enough to show they're collinear. Parallel plus the common point is good enough. But you will always have the common point because that's a, that's a midpoint is going to be your common point. You're going to construct your vectors in a way that makes sure that that midpoint is the common point. So that, that's a bit of a no-brainer, that one really. So that's the theory. There's not a huge amount of working in these questions. Let's just apply that technique to these two examples. So the first thing to do is work from your coordinates to the vector. So just quickly scan your points to make sure that the alphabetical order is also the order in which the points are lined up. So for example, 1, 4 and 8 is in order of P, Q and R. So that tells us that these are lined up. You've got to be careful with that because if you choose the wrong internal point, the wrong midpoint, then it's going to throw off the whole sort of approach to the question. So we need to start by making our vectors here. So we're going P to Q and then Q to R. These are going to be our two vectors. So we'll start with P to Q. How you construct your vectors will really depend upon how you've learnt vectors when you first learnt vectors. There's different ways to construct a vector. Just remember though that the vector P, Q means you're starting at point P and going to point Q. Vectors are essentially a set of directions from one point to the other. So my preferred method here would be start at point P and go to Q while well, that's going from 1 to 4, which is a move in the x direction of positive 3, 5 to minus 6, uh, sorry, 5 to minus 1 is minus 6 in the y direction, and then minus 3 to 0 is 3 in the positive uh, z direction. Similarly, we need to make our second vector, which is from Q to R, so vector QR, just going through the same method. The method you use might be a different way, it might be R minus Q, now that's a different method for getting the, the component vector, but either way is fine. So just doing the same thing, so 4 to 8 is a move of positive 4, minus 1 to minus 9 is minus 8, and then 0 to 4 is a move of 4. So we've got our two vectors, now the challenge is to show that those vectors are parallel. 
How do you show a vector is parallel to another one? Well, you basically, let me just say I've got a vector A and a vector B and we want to show they're parallel. You just basically show that one is a multiple of the other. So if you can say that A is equal to, for example, three times B or even a half times B or any ratio of B, then those two vectors are parallel because all that, that means is vector B um, it's got a different magnitude, a different length in the vector A, but it goes in the same direction. If it goes in the same direction, then that's another way of saying that they're parallel. So that's all that we're really looking for, some multiple between our vectors. Is there a multiple between these vectors? So I think you can maybe just look at the numbers and kind of figure out that if you take one third of three and add it on, you would get four. And the same with that one and the same with that one. That's fine. That's maybe a little bit not formal enough. So a, form, a more formal way to do it is to notice that there is a common factor here. Common factor of three, which gives you what's called a base factor of one minus two, one. And here we've got a common factor of four. Now this doesn't always happen in these questions that you get a common factor. Sometimes the numbers are just clearly a multiple of each other. In this case, so we're, we're pulling out the common factor just to make it a little clearer um, what's happening here. My counting went a little bit off there. That was meant to be a one, not a two. So one and then minus two and then one. So notice that we've ended up with the same base vector. If the two vectors have got the same base vector, but a different scalar, a different multiple, then that is good enough to show that they are parallel. So th this is good enough to show that these two vectors are parallel. How would you write that? Um, well, one way you could do it is if you multiply this vector by four, and multiply this one by three, they would be equal. In other words, four times this and three times this, and you can set those equal. So four times the vector PQ is equal to three times the vector QR. So just check that yourself if you're not quite sure why I'm getting that. I'm just basically saying that um, if you multiply that by four, you would get a 12 here, and you multiply that by three, you would get a 12 here, and then they would be the same, then they would be equal. So this here is showing that they are a multiple of each other. There's different ways to write it. You might prefer to write it as PQ equals, just by dividing the four over, three over four QR, or you could do it the other way around. You could divide the three over. All of these options are good enough to show that those two vectors are parallel. Going back to the problem of showing that these are collinear, all we need to do now is to state um, so we would state something like this implies that PQ is, uh, well, you could use a symbol or something parallel to, to QR. And then you need to make a statement, something like, but Q is a common point. Okay, so one of these kind of little mathy sentences you've sometimes got to write at the end of a question, which are really annoying, but Q is a common point and that implies that P, Q and R are collinear. So one huge mistake that I see often in these questions is that everyone will generally get this kind of roughly right, but at the end the sentence won't quite tie it all together or a really common mistake is to write that the vectors are collinear. So it's not the vectors that are collinear, that's not a thing, it's the points that are collinear and we're just using vectors to show that they're collinear. Okay, so I've worked through that one quite slowly. You can go through these questions a lot more quickly. Let's do that with this one here. But the technique will never change. It's really just about making your vectors, showing that they're parallel, and then stating that there's a common point. So again, just quickly check in that your alphabetical order of your points is also the correct actual order. So minus seven to three to 18, that must lie therefore in the middle. So A to B to C. So our line does go A to B to C. So that means, and that's really, really important because that means we're going to make the vectors A, B, and then B, C. So just constructing your vectors again. So A, B minus seven to three is 10, and then 10 again, and then four. So I might just go ahead already and pull out the common factor. So it's going to be two, giving us a base vector of five, five, and two. We expect to see that base vector again in our next vector, which is the vector B, C. That's just the way these questions need to go. So constructing your vector however you need to, so three to 18 is a move of positive 15, two to 17 is also 15 and then six. So you can see there's a common factor of three there given the base vector five, five, two. 
So always look for that. You should end up with that. If you're using that method, you should end up with that. Now, you don't always have to do that. For example, if this was 2028, then clearly 2028 is double this. So you don't need to use the base vector method in that case. You could do, but it'd be fine just to say that that one is, you know, double twice the other vector. And that would be good enough. This already shows that these vectors are parallel. You might just want to formalize that a little. So again, we could say something like three times AB equals two times the vector BC. So we're showing that multiple. And again, you could take that further if you wish. You could say that AB is equal to two over three BC, or you could do it the other way around. You could say that AB, uh, sorry, uh, three over two AB is equal to BC. So you can divide either way around or don't divide. This line, this line, and this line are all good enough to show that the vector AB and BC are parallel to each other. And then again, you would just finish this off by saying the vectors are parallel, but B is a common point. So that's your middle point, the one that joins the two vectors together. So you would say something like, um, so AB is uh, parallel to BC. B is a common point. Therefore, so pulling everything together, the points A, B, and C. So again, the points are collinear, lined up. Okay, so the same method does work, like I said earlier, using gradients, because instead of showing your vectors are parallel, if you can show that these lines have got the same gradient, that's also just another way of saying that they go in the same direction rather than in different directions. So we've only looked at the, the vector method in this class. So it's not the most difficult technique in the world. I've made that a little longer than it needs to be. You can scoot through these questions. Well, I did this one pretty quickly, but you can scoot through these in less than a minute, really, if you've uh, practiced them a few times. So not that difficult of a technique, but practice is the key with all of these techniques. And it's good that it's not a difficult technique. If you can practice it to the point where you find it easy, then that's the ideal scenario. So hopefully that makes sense. If you've got any questions or comments, then just leave them in the box below.